Hey, Crafters Big D here, and this week we're doing something a little different. Uh, starting off, a little backstory. Uh, back in the 90s, I was a pretty prolific painter. Uh, I used to play a lot of Warhammer 40k, Warhammer Fantasy, Blood Bowl. Uh, I was a GW kid. When I got out of the military, I threw a ton of money at Games Workshop and bought a lot of their stuff. I loved it. I loved painting it. Um, but as the late 90s wore on, I got married, I got a kid, had a second kid, and really kind of fell away from painting. Um, I still love this. I still loved it, though. I just wasn't actually able to do it for a long time. Uh, I got back into terrain, and when I started playing D&D again, really big time, uh, as my oldest kid got to be seven, eight years old, you know, we started making stuff together, and I was making the terrain, but we were using the D&D pre-painted minis for our figures, so I didn't have to worry about painting. Well, in the time I was off, the last few months, I've had a lot of time to just do nothing, and I said a lot of that nothing watching a lot of YouTube. And it got me thinking, you know, I used to love painting minis, and minis are part of the game. They're part of the epic in your table. So I decided to start repainting and start painting minis. And I realized that my skills were pretty meh. So I needed to start flexing that muscle. I needed to learn some techniques and get better at it. So I watched a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of video tutorials. And I gotta say, first off, the Miniac and his channel is amazing. Miniac, I love you. You're wonderful. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I was talking with my kid about minis, and uh, he realized how passionate about it was it, and so he even went with the Miniax choice and got me a new paint kit so I could stop painting my minis with the craft paints and actually got some mini quality paints. So another thank you to the Miniac for really putting me on the path of some really nice paints. So I kept looking at more and more of his tutorials. And one that kept coming up, and I saw it come up on a couple of table cap, tabletop game, Adam Smashers, tabletop crafters, um, or tabletop board gamers, I forget the name of it, Adam Smasher, I'll link it down below, he's great. Homage, Pachow, but I'm not gonna do the little thing today. Anyhow, he's great. And he talks about the wet palette. Um, Black Magic Craft has talked about a wet palette and making their own. And a lot of guys talk about, you know, needing a wet palette. I tried it. It was really good. It did work well. And I was using their homemade ones, and I hated them. I don't like the paper towel. I don't know why. I just didn't like it. Just didn't like the paper towel. So then I really looked further into what a wet palette is. And I realized, I make stuff. I can make one of those. I can make one of those cheaper than the 12 to 15 dollars you would pay for a really good one so i did and it's about four dollars so two things you need to buy they're very simple and it'll be very easy you want a long bladed razor knife too we're going to go to the table and i'm going to show you how i made it and i can't help but suggest that you use it if you're going to paint your minis, use it. It keeps your paint moist. I'm not going to do the Miniac thing. <laughs> um, and uh, it helps with blending. It helps with uh, thinning your paint down. It helps in so many numerous ways. So do the wet palette. Let me show you how you can do it for cheap. And if you like it and you want a professional equipment, go and spend the $12, $15, buy one. But if this is good enough for you, which it is for me so far, get yourself one. Four bucks. You're going to need to go to Walmart and you're going to need to go to uh, the Dollar Tree. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is the big secret. You need two things. A car sponge and a good sealable container. You can get the cheap ones at Dollar Tree. But they're not going to stay sealed. They come right open. So I suggest I went to Walmart and I got a Rubbermaid. And this is the size you want. You want them about the same size as your sponge. Here's the thing. A pack of these, a pack of three of these is $2.95. So it tax. It's a little bit over three bucks. Uh, but you're going to use one. And that'll be perfect. 
you're also going to want a car sponge. This is the actual Dollar Tree house brand, which is a dollar, but you can get any sponge, any car sponge that size. It's really straightforward. You get the sponge, we're going to put it in there. It's going to be a little too tall, and I'll show you what I mean. So, you get the two, take it out of the wrapper, and let's get to work. Ta-da! Okay, no, it's too big. See? It's not actually fitting. So, what you're going to need to do is we're going to take our cutter, and we're going to cut it a little bit more than half, and then we're going to canter the sides just a little bit. So, let me do that, and I'll be right back. All right. All right, crafters, trimmed up. See how far it comes up? We've got it there. The lid will fit on nice and tight. Snap it in place, and you got yourself a wet palette without the roughness of paper towels. You just cut a piece of parchment paper to just fit right over your sponge like that, and sit in the center of it, and you're good to go. Nice thing is, you got another half a sponge left, so you can actually make two of them. So you end up with two of these. So one for you and one for the other painter in your family. Or two more containers for lunches. Either way, you're good to go. That's it, folks. That's all it takes. Little ingenuity, little re-engineering, and you got yourself a $15 tool for 4 bucks. So, thanks much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>